Hello, everybody. This is Paul Usowitz with Community Credit Counselors. And the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Usowitz with Community Credit Counselors, and I want to welcome you to our July webinar, um, Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking about in some insurance basics, and our guest today is going to be Mr. John M. Williams. Uh, Mr. Williams is President and CEO of the Williams Insurance Agency, and we're certainly glad that he can join us today. Um, now, again, as stated, Mr. Williams uh, is President and CEO of the Williams Insurance Agency based here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, he has been associated with Farmers Insurance Group of companies for the past 18 years. He has a very successful agency with over 1,500 clients. And he handles auto, home, life, and also business insurance. Now, of course, John has achieved several honors and awards over the span of his career, including the Topper Club Award, which represents the top 10% of the agency force. Mr. Williams is also a former chairman of the board for Kingdom Federal Credit Union, vice president of the William T. Mercer Foundation, and he's a member of several other professional and civic organizations. Now, Mr. Williams is originally from New Kent, Virginia. He came to the Hampton Roads area here in 1981 to attend Old Dominion University, where he received his bachelor's in business administration with a minor in marketing. So we're very uh, glad that he could join us today. And uh, Mr. Williams, I want to welcome you. Thank you, Paul. I'm glad to be here today. All right, great. And we certainly appreciate you taking time to join us and, and answer some good questions about insurance uh, so that our clients are well informed. Uh, all right. Um, we're going to talk about several different, uh, you know, a couple different types of insurances today. And um, is it okay if I call you John? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you, John. All right. Um, we're going to start by talking about with some homeowners insurance type questions. Um, the first question that we have here is, you know, obviously we live in a hurricane area zone, but we are nationwide. This broadcast is going out nationwide, and there's also tornadoes and other types of uh, uh, other types of weather situations. So it brings up a question: How do I, or how does a client obtain an inventory of you, of their home in case of a hurricane or a tornado or some other type of disaster or situation comes? Okay, Paul. Um if you had a burglary or a fire in your home tomorrow, you wouldn't want to rely just on your memory when filing a claim. The items you use every day may come to mind quickly, but what about the set of silverware used only on special occasions? In that instance, an inventory of your household goods in both words and pictures is essential to getting all the benefits that you are due. In addition, Compiling a list of possessions can provide the agent with a basis for determining whether your coverage is sufficient. Uh, your personal agent can make any adjustments necessary to fill in the gaps or eliminate cost, costly overlaps. Uh, I recommend the following methods to document your household inventory. Number one, uh, with photographs and videotapes. Uh, you don't have to be a professional photograph, photographer or photographer to, uh, to get an inventory of your possessions. You can start by you know, taking your digital camera or videotape and going through each room wall by wall, ceiling to ceiling, floor to ceiling, um, and then take close-up photo shots of valuables in each room just to give you an idea of what your contents are for that area. Uh, when you finish each room, you can go to the closet, basements, attics, guard, garage, and storage shed areas. Uh, another thing we look at is the sales receipts. And with them, they can help provide ownership, prove ownership. In the, in the case of more recent purchases, they also establish the value of an article. Uh, professional appraisals are also a 
good way to document your inventory. In addition to jewelry or precious metals, other items that should be evaluated by an appraiser include art, uh, antiques, furs, collections of any kind, or valuables for which you have no bill of sale. All right. I think it's important that you secure these records in a safe place and not to keep all of your inventory records at home. Uh, you can keep them in a safe deposit box. Um, the inventory itself could be destroyed in case of a fire or, or household damage. So it's, like I said, it's important to consider location in a safe deposit box or the home of a relative. You wouldn't want it, all your valuables to be gone and not have any record whatsoever. Um, so that's kind of how we come up with, you know, the inventory for a household. Okay. Great, great points. I mean, I, you know, I, I never thought of, obviously, it's great to make a record and your pictures and all that, but, you know, normally I think most people, and you bring out a good point, I think would, you know, having it off-site somewhere not. Not in your home. case of that fire or something. Obviously, you talk about certain valuable items, like maybe jewelry and, and other very, you know, collections and things like that. Uh, but jewelry, what do I have to do to make sure my jewelry and furs are covered under my homeowner's insurance? Okay. On In that regard, the let's talk about just the standard policy for homeowners or renters. It comes about, comes with about two thousand dollars in jury coverage and a lot of people aren't aware of that um, to get that jury uh, coverage increased on that policy the insurance company does require uh, an appraisal of the item that you wish to insure and a, a local jeweler can secure that for you or uh, get you a, an appraisal of a piece of uh, jewelry or watch especially items above $1,000. Uh, they, they have to be scheduled on the policy. Um, so it's important to have those there. I mean, I've had clients that have uh, not been aware of that type of situation, and they've called to make a claim, and when you have to let them know that, you know, the max the coverage is $2,000 when they've got a, you know, five or $10,000 Rolex watch, it's not a good conversation to have. So I think that's a very important item to discuss with your local agent. Okay, great. And, and again, I would imagine, you know, depending upon the household, a lot of households definitely have at least two thousand worth of jewelry in their home. So oh, absolutely, you know. absolutely. I mean, normally the, the spouse's wedding band is worth well over a thousand dollars. Just that one piece alone. Right. Right. Well, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, um, again, we're, we're broadcasting this all over the country. Obviously, we have certain areas here in, in, in the Tidewater, Virginia, you know, especially with the water all around us, like Norfolk, especially certain areas I know, and even Virginia Beach. Um, and, and a lot of questions come up, you know, if there is a flash flood or a flooding, you know, obviously with the rains we get and the hurricane sometimes. Um, is somebody covered for flood? Am I covered for flood automatically under my homeowner's insurance? The answer to that, Paul, would be no. Um, flood insurance is, is a comes under a totally separate policy, uh, and the flood insurance is provided by the federal government under a program run by the Federal Insurance Administration. 
So uh, my advice, if you are in a flood prone area, it may be wise to, to go ahead and purchase flood insurance. Even though you, even if you're not in a flood zone, you still have the availability to purchase that coverage under a preferred rating. So it's a good idea, even though you're not in a flood zone, we don't know where uh, areas will be flooded. So even if you're not in a flood zone, it's a good idea to carry flood, flood insurance at that preferred rate. Uh, your local agent, once again, should be able to help determine if your property is in a flood zone and provide you with a policy if needed. Um, I have a lot of calls from real estate agents that call before a customer puts a contract on a property just to see if that, that uh, home is in a flood zone or not. Um, Flood, flood insurance can, you know, make or break a deal sometimes. Uh, clients can pay anywhere from $300 for preferred policy for the year to, I've seen them as high as $2,500. So that could be a deal breaker for someone who's kind of tight going into a closing. So it's good to get that flood zone determination up front. And... That'll give you an idea if you're working within your numbers that you need to be in. Um, and like I said, just because your home is not in a designated flood zone doesn't doesn't mean you sh you never suffer a flood. We never know <laughs> when or where a flood will hit. To be honest. Understand. Understand. Certainly. Well, okay. All right. Thanks, John. Um, now, uh, have that came in is. Uh, you know, and, and this happens occasionally in homes, obviously. A pipe burst and water flows all over my floors. Am I covered? Now, in that type of situation, you are covered. Uh, the standard homeowner's policy does cover you for accidental discharge of water from a plumbing or heat source. So that pipe bursts uh, behind the walls and it floods out your floor while you're at work. The policy will recover will cover the resulting water damage to the flooring, the carpet, hardwood floors, but it will not cover to replace that pipe in the wall. That plumbing plumbing is not going to be covered. Same situation if your water heater heater bursts. We see a lot of those in you know homes where where the where the home is, you know, 10, 12 years old. Life expectancy on those water heaters is right around that area. So if a water heater were to burst and the floors are flooded out, then that's the result. Like I said, the resulting water damage is covered. However, the cost to replace that water heater itself would not be covered or the plumbing is not covered. So even though flood is not covered under the homeowner policy, but a pipe bursting would be considered a uh, covered loss under the policy. Okay. All right. Good information. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, another question on homeowners insurance. Um, you know that clients might have from time to time. You know when when do when when should they or when do they file a claim and when should they refrain maybe from filing a claim? Well, that's that's a good question, and we confront it with that a lot, um, especially in regards to smaller claims. With the recent storms we've had, several clients have called and tried to submit small claims on the insurance policies. I always advise them that insurance is for large catastrophic losses and not small claims. Um, insurers are hurting themselves in the long run by putting in small claims for, say, $100 or $200. Uh, in today's market, the homeowners' policies are rated somewhat like the auto policies. If you uh, submit claims, um, it, it is a, a notch against you, or you will be surcharged for claims a lot of times if they're over a certain dollar amount. So for the smaller claims, you, you really want to refrain from those and not get into a frequency uh, problem with the number of claims being reported. Homeowners insurance, especially in our area here in the Hampton Roads area, is, is, uh, has really changed in the last couple of years and there's a, a lot of companies that have just pulled out of the market uh, just because they, 
they're not profitable in this area at all. So putting in smaller claims only only will hurt the customer if they are, like I say, you know, less than two or three hundred dollars, because with the surcharge that the customer will see on the renewal, it's just not cost effective at all. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, again, we live in, uh, even though we realize this is a nationwide audience, but we've got up and down the East Coast and perhaps some of the West Coast as well, uh, you know, obviously the risk of hurricanes. Um, and can you explain to me what a, a special hurricane deductible is? Sure, Paul. Like I said, here, we're here in the Hampton Roads area on the East Coast. Uh, and most homeowners policies in the coastal area now have a mandatory hurricane slash wind deductible. And it's usually a percentage of the dwelling coverage, either 2% or 5%. So for example, if you have a $300,000 home and you have a 2% uh, hurricane wind deductible, then you'll be responsible for the first $6,000 or with the 5%, $15,000 in damage uh, from a hurricane. And this is very important. So review your policy today. And if you cannot afford this type of deductible, it's time to shop your policy. Um, I run into people every day that just not aware of this special hurricane deductible that they have on their policies. and you want to make sure that when that loss does come that you don't have to come out of your pocket for six to ten thousand dollars to cover a deductible and a lot of customers they just don't have that type of money to bring forward uh, when there is a loss so it's important to review those documents when they come in the mail set up an annual review with your agent just don't take that packet that comes in the mail and stuff it in the corner and say okay I'm covered so I think it's important to have those reviews with your agent on an annual basis. That's what we're here for. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Very important. Okay. All right. We're going to change gears a little bit and now switch to some automobile insurance questions. Um, first question has, and <laughs> this is uh, getting near and dear to my heart, are there any discounts available for seniors? Well, uh, I think most states uh, do have some type of discounts available for seniors. Uh, Virginia law here requires insurance companies to give a reduction in premiums to persons 55 years of age or older if they have successfully completed a motor vehicle accident prevention course approved by the Department of Motor Vehicles. Each insurer must determine the appropriate reduction uh, the quali qualifications for reduced premiums is good for three years following the completion of the accident prevention course. So if you are a senior citizen, be sure to ask how much of a discount you're entitled to receive. Um, here, here again, it, this is a good point just to sit down with your agent. And a lot of people in today's world, they want, you know, everything done uh, over the, you know, automatically and they don't they don't want to take the time to come in but I think it's very important just to have those annual checkups or annual reviews because things change on an annual basis um, the amount of coverage that we have on our auto policies a lot of times I'll ask the, the client well how did you come up with these coverages and a lot of times they have no clue how they came up with those coverages so it's important to sit down with the agent, let them have a, give you a little course on what you're, what you're purchasing so that you're an uh, informed client. So I think that's very important for each customer. Okay, great, great. It, it sounds like uh, communication between you and the agent throughout you know, at least once a year, if nothing else, is, is vital. Yes, I would agree. It's, it's, it's real important. And with the uh, farmer's insurance, you know, the company does uh, ask us to, to do at least one uh, review per year with the client. And a lot of times, if we can't get them to come into the office, we'll try to schedule the uh, 
uh, reviews over the phone with the client. So I think that it is very important. Okay, great, great. All right. Um, another question on automobile insurance. Um, you know, um, a lot of our clients out there obviously may have teenagers. Uh, I did mine are <laughs> now, but are there any any any? You always hear about the you know once you get a teenager, your rates are going to go real high and all that. Are there any discounts available for teens? Um, teens are the most highly rated drivers on the road today. You can ask any parent who's had a teen driver in the household and they'll let you know that this is true based on the premium dollars they have to pay to have their son or daughter listed on their auto policy. One discount that is available for them is the good student discount. So if the teen has a GPA of 3.0 or higher, they are entitled to this good student discount. And sometimes that can be range anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of their uh, their premium. So that's that's an important um, discount to ask for uh, when you're speaking with your agent, and let them know that you let them know that um, they do have an honor student in the household who's driving, and they'll they'll be available for that discount. Great, great. Okay, good, good. All right, uh, we have time, I think, for one more question, John. Um, our credit scores, we always talk about, obviously, having a good credit score here uh, with community credit counselors, uh, you know, the client, what they can do to improve their credit scores, things like that. But are credit scores used in rating automobile and homeowners insurance? Well, you open up a whole can of worms when you start talking about those credit scores. And uh, many insurance companies believe that credit scores help them uh, underwrite better. Uh, this is because the insurance companies have shown that a direct relationship exists between a person's credit score and that person's likelihood to file a claim. In other words, the, best, the better of the credit score, the fewer the claims filed. So yes, credit scores are used in rating auto and homeowners insurance, and it can make a big difference in the premium. Uh, Take, for example, I've, I've seen clients who we've quoted uh, homeowner's policy for in this region. Um, someone with an excellent credit score, you know, they may be at a uh, six or $700 for the year for a standard homeowner's policy. Someone who has a less than favorable credit score could pay up to double for the same amount of coverage. So. Um, it's very important to uh, monitor your credit, um, to know what your credit rating is, to make sure that there's not any um, stuff on your credit report that shouldn't be. So, um, so credit overall does have a direct rating on your premium amounts for both auto and homeowners insurance. So I think the answer to that question would be yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, John. Well, certainly that's, that's going to wrap up our time today. We certainly would like to thank you, John, for taking the time out of your day to answer uh, these common questions for our clients about insurance. Uh, we've learned a lot of valuable information today. Um, if anybody out there uh, has insurance needs here in the Tidewater uh, area, in this area here, you certainly can contact John at the Williams Insurance Agency. You see the number on your screen there. It's 757 Four five six nine four four zero, or his email jwilliams1 at farmersagent.com. And again, John, I want to again thank you for taking the time out of your day today to answer our questions and to be available to do that. You're quite welcome, and, Paul. I enjoyed being with you guys today. Thank you. And uh, we community credit counselors, of course, we want to uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for our Ask the Expert Insurance Basics webinar. Uh, next month, we will have a webinar on borrowing basics, and we'll be talking about loans, application tips, getting the right mindset for a loan, uh, items like that. And uh, we will let everybody know by email and on our website and our Facebook pages uh, when that webinar will be. But again, we want to thank everybody for joining us today for this Ask the Expert webinar on insurance, and I hope everybody has a blessed day and a rest of a good summer, and be safe. All right.